Roy Rogers' daughter confirms the truth about him. When it comes to Western music, few persons have had as much effect on Americans as Roy Rogers. He was known as the King of the Cowboys and appeared in multiple films throughout the 1940s and 1950s, as well as playing country music during most of the 1930s. He was one of America's finest jewels and is still adored today. In these historic photographs, we look at the life of an icon. Early Years Roy Rogers had a poor beginning to his life. Leonard Sly was born on November 5, 1911 in Cincinnati, Ohio to Andrew or Andy Sly and Maddie Sly Nee Womack. The family resided in a modest tenement structure on 2nd Street near where Riverfront Stadium would eventually be erected. Yet shortly after Rogers' birth, the family chose to make certain adjustments in their life, which triggered Rogers' adventure. Upstream on the Ohio River Shortly after Rogers was born, the Sly family decided to seek their fortune in greener pastures away from the hustle and bustle of city life. Andrew Sly and his brother Will constructed a 12 by 50 foot houseboat out of salvaged timber in 1912 and set up sail on the Ohio River to Portsmouth, Ohio. The family bought a parcel of land near Portsmouth with the intention of building a home. But the Great Flood of 1913 compelled them to stay on the houseboat for a few years longer. Here is where Roy Rogers spent much of his boyhood. Passion for Horses After a few years in Portsmouth, the Sly family moved again in 1919, this time to Duck Run, a farm outside Lucasville, Ohio. Roy's father, Andrew Sly, went to work at a shoe factory in Portsmouth, returning home only on weekends and giving presents. One of the most noteworthy presents was a horse, on which Roy Rogers learned the fundamentals of horseback riding. He had always had a passion for horses, and his father's talent put him up to be quite a great Western star. Born to Succeed Roy Rogers' meteoric ascension was no accident. Despite the fact that it occurred much later in life, he was already well-known in his area owing to his amazing skills. Since the farm was located in a rural region, the options for amusement were restricted. As there was no radio to listen to, Rogers would sing, play the mandolin, and call the dances during the Sly family's square dances, which were frequently attended by neighbors. Around this period, he also learned to yodel. These early performances aided him in discovering his love for entertainment, which he quickly pursued. Days in High School Roy Rogers, then known as Len Sly, attended high school in McDermott, Ohio. He was a brilliant child, but he'd never finish high school. Following his sophomore year of high school, his family relocated back to Cincinnati in 1927, where his father worked at another shoe business. He recognized his family needed financial assistance, so he joined his father in the Cincinnati plant. He attempted to reconcile employment and study by attending night school, but he kept falling asleep and eventually dropped out of school. The Start of a Legend the Slys moved a couple more times before settling in Inglewood, California in 1931. This would be Rogers' first opportunity to shine. Rogers featured on the Midnight Frolic radio program. His singing and yodeling piqued the eye of the Rocky Mountaineers, a local music group. The band traveled numerous states, performing in small taverns and radio programs. They renamed themselves the O Bar O Cowboys later on. This ensemble was only mildly successful, but it laid the groundwork for Rogers' career as an entertainer. The First Marriage In 1932, Rogers started dating Lucille Escalise, whom he'd met while purchasing a Palomino Colt called Golden Cloud, which he nicknamed Trigger. Rogers was a fan of Escalise, and they married in 1933. Their honeymoon period, however, was brief. The pair quickly realized they weren't suited for one another and thought they committed too quickly. Their relationship quickly deteriorated and Rogers and Escalise divorced in 1936. The Second Marriage Despite his disastrous first marriage, Rogers' life was soon replete with love. On a tour with the Obaro Cowboys in Roswell, New Mexico, Roy met Grace Arlene Wilkins, who called in and offered to make him a pie if he performed the Swiss yodel. 
Rogers followed through, and the two remained in contact. Rogers and Wilkins started dating after his marriage to Ascalise ended, and they married in June 1936. The Cowboys of Obaro Roy Rogers intended to get his big break with the Obaro Cowboys, but it didn't work out. Many musicians suffer in the early stages of their careers, and Rogers was no exception. He toured throughout numerous states with the Cowboys, who were very famous locally and on radio stations. Nonetheless, the timing was poor. The Great Recession soon came hard, and many couldn't afford to go to concerts, thus their tour was a total flop. The Pioneer's Sons Rogers' popularity with the Obaro Cowboys was short-lived as the band disbanded in 1933. Rogers sought to build a new band and collaborated with Bob Nolan and Tim Spencer to form the Pioneers Trio. Hugh Farr, a violin player who contributed a bottom voice, eventually joined the Pioneers Trio. An announcer changed their names to Sons of the Pioneers when they were performing on a radio broadcast, claiming they were too young to be Pioneers themselves. The organization readily approved and accepted the new name. Success Roy's ascent to fame started with music, namely with the Sons of the Pioneers. Their fame has skyrocketed when the radio announcer renamed them. By the summer of 1934, their fame had spread beyond the Los Angeles region. They also got a recording deal with Decca Records the same year. Roy got his start in movies thanks to the Sons of the Pioneers. The Sons had a few little appearances in movies as background characters. But Roy stood out and finally landed a few modest roles in Hollywood. Admission to Film Rogers started to take his vocation as an entertainer seriously, and he began to make inroads into the film business in 1935. In the start of his career, he was often cast in supporting parts. His big break came in 1938, when he auditioned for a role as a singing cowboy for Republic Pictures. Rogers was cast in the role, and he made his leading debut in the film Beneath Western Stars in 1938. The picture was a big hit, and it helped to get him into Hollywood. Sons of the Pioneers Divide Rogers' first major musical breakthrough came with the Sons of the Pioneers, where he collaborated with artists like Bob Nolan, Tim Spencer, and Hugh Farr, with whom he would be friends for the rest of his life. Nevertheless, owing to contract issues, he was forced to quit the group. The trio was legally bound to feature in a couple films with Columbia Pictures, as a result, in order to pursue his film career professionally, he had to quit the Sons of the Pioneers and contract with Republic Pictures. Marriage Life Roy Rogers married Grace Wilkins in 1936, and they had a very happy marriage. But tragedy struck when they decided to start trying for a baby. Doctors advised them that they would be unable to conceive naturally, owing to medical concerns. The couple was depressed, but it didn't stop them from trying to have a baby. Roy and Grace adopted Cheryl Darlene Rogers as their first and youngest child in 1941. Heartbreak and Surprises Despite physicians' warnings, Roy and Grace were pleased to learn that they'd been mistaken about the couple's inability to conceive. Grace became pregnant shortly after the adoption of their first child, and they brought Linda Lou Rogers into the world in 1943. Grace became pregnant again in 1945. In 1946, she gave birth to their first child, Roy Jr. Unfortunately, it also brought Roy grief. Grace died a few days later as a result of complications, leaving Roy Rogers heartbroken and bereaved. New Flowers Rogers was profoundly devastated by Grace's death after they had spent more than a decade together. He was still adamant on raising his three children on his own, but he didn't have to. Roy reunited with the attractive actress Dale Evans shortly after Grace's death. Roy had already met Evans on the set of a film in 1944. After Grace's death, the two developed affections for one another, and they married in 1947. They stayed married until he died in 1998. The Marriage Roy Rogers and Dale Evans met on a set in 1944 and became in love following the death of his second wife, Grace Arlene. In 1946. They married in 1947, but it was clearly a stormy ceremony that became fodder for jokes a few years later. The ceremony took place on a ranch near Davis, Oklahoma. 
Because of the snowfall, the pastor had to journey up there on horseback. A fire also broke out in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which Roy and his best man quickly extinguished. But it left Dale perplexed and wondering where her fiancé was at the altar for many minutes. Film Achievement Rogers quickly established himself after the first memorable performance in 1938 with the distinct personality and innate musical aptitude. He was undoubtedly the most vocal supporter of the Western genre. He appeared in films such as King of the Cowboys and Son of Paleface. For more than a decade, he was the number one actor in Westerns, a legacy that would later be taken over by giants such as John Wayne and John Ford. Roy Rogers was not only skilled in the entertainment industry, but also in business. He realized how much he was worth. Thus, in 1940, he stipulated in his contract that he would retain ownership of his name, face, and voice. This has catastrophic consequences. He made a fortune by marketing his name and personality. Roy Rogers' toys, comics, and action figures were available, with all revenues going to Rogers. Daughter Like Father Three of Rogers' nine children had died. Cheryl Darlene Rogers, the eldest daughter, grew up to look much like her father. She has an exciting and amorous life, and she shares a passion for Western movies and music, as well as travel. She'd married her high school classmate, Larry Barnard, after falling in love. They lived peacefully together in their trailer, exploring the countryside and their seven children, just like father, just like daughter. Inspiring and Influential Given how influential Roy Rogers was in the film and music industries back then, it's no wonder that he urged his own children to seek careers in the arts. Acting came naturally to them, and there's no greater example than Mimi Rogers. She grew up to become a legendary American actress, appearing in major TV programs including Mad Men, The X-Files, and Bosch. She was also the first wife of Tom Cruise, another charismatic actor in the same league as Roy.